Hello everyone, this is David Pizzat again, and today we have a special guest, an uh, awesome cinematographer uh, from uh, Tampa. He was born and raised in Puerto Rico, and he has some amazing videos to show us here today. Also, he'll be talking about his workshop. Um, his workshop is about the dwells, something really interesting that he's put together in New York. This man has been seeked out from from uh, from all over the place, from all over the world. Um, he, we just had a small conversation here a little while ago, and he's he's talking to me about he's been all over the place, all over Mexico, you know, Puerto Rico, the states, you name it. Uh, he's very seeked out. Um, I don't want to uh, I I don't want to tell you too much. I want him to tell you a little bit more about his videos and his experiences. And today he's going to be allowing for us to. To, to to ask him any question. He's, he's a very friendly guy. I'm, I'm actually met this person before in other conferences. Um, we've, we've, uh, we've met, we've talked before, so it's really, really nice to uh, finally have Jose Ortiz, Ortiz here with us. Jose, you want to introduce yourself, sir? Well, thank you so much for that introduction. <laughs> it was kind of nice, huh? Uh, and, well, first of all, thank you for everybody. Uh, for all the people out there who are pretty much, you know, using this uh, uh, social media to, to get in touch. Um, for those people who don't know, who don't know who I am, I'm Jose Ortiz. I am a wedding film maker. Uh, I've been in the business probably about 10 years now. Uh, I shoot weddings, also I do workshops. I, I've been inspired by so many People during the last 10 years and I will say workshops probably is one of the best things that I ever decide to do in this business why because it gave me the chance uh, to meet other people doing the same thing that I do and some of them they go because they want to learn they want to enhance their craft but at the same time they let me um, they let me uh, feel that I'm not the only one out there, that there's people out there that they can do the job that I do, that they might not be having the chance to be in the right place or the right moment or not having the right tools to do it, but at the same time, they can be, they can be having success and being, uh, uh, having all, you know, reaching all the goals, let's say, let's put it that way, reaching all the goals that they want uh, as I did, and 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 I still in a, in the same way that I keep doing. Um, well, to start with this, uh, I have to say that most of you know that I'm going to be in Arizona now in August. I'm having um, a workshop. Um, I think it's a Sunday, the first Sunday of the event. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the date. I think it's the 16. Is that when they start the convention? Uh, I'm sorry. It's uh, I'll say it's uh, August the 29th through. Um yeah, right. It's the last week, right? I wasn't right. sure. Yeah, it, it, my in my case is uh, that I think uh, my workshop is a, it, it's Sunday, and I am gonna be also uh, having a presentation. Um, the workshop this time I'm always looking for different things, and um, this time I propose them for the workshop doing a, a boudoir, a video boudoir workshop, which is something that normally we don't see. We see all the time. Photographers doing photo, uh, I mean, boudoir workshops for photography, but normally for video, we don't see it. And in fact, when I did this uh, a video that we're going to be showing uh, from, from a workshop, actually, that video was shot during a workshop in, uh, in New York. Uh, that was the idea. It was the idea to build and, and create a, a new, a new uh, option. Let's put it that way. A, a, a new option in our business for clients. Why? Because why I say that it's new is because from the beginning, when I was looking online, I, I, I always noticed that when we had the boudoir videos, it was more like a video of the making of whatever the photographer was shooting that day. Or, you know, getting shots that the photographer doing the boudoir session and maybe guys getting a few shots here and there. In this case, I always been a person that uh, have to build my my product based on the storytelling and the concept and and that's always my priority, right? So this is what we did in New York. We were not just shooting a boudoir session; we were creating the story around. And that's something that I will say 
it's very important because because if you're gonna if you're gonna bring something to the client different to the to the pictures, that might be the case. You know, you have to come up with a video that is telling a story and it's probably putting something extra. Uh, that way, the client can go and have and say, "Wow, this is so cool." Why I'm doing a workshop of it because it's totally different uh, when you are building or when you are putting together or when you are having a production like we did for that um, uh, film of the boudoir, it's very different in terms of, it's very different the way that the photographer handles the situation versus the video. Um, a lot of these girls and brides, it's where it's, they feel more, they feel more easy to con convince them if, if you go in and you uh, approach them about the photos for the boudoir, but when you tell them that you're gonna do a movie, they get scared. They feel they feel that it's more like a porno thing going on just because it's now a video. And right. the truth is, the truth is the worst part is like when they're doing the pictures, they're posing. And it's easier to pose. It's easier to do things more posy and, and the photographer is directing you rather than when you're doing the video because in the video is more acting and you have to be uh, more secure of yourself, especially in the boudoir, when you're trying to look good for a video camera. So the truth is, what I'm trying to do in, 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 when I do when I do this type of workshop is to teach you to be a better director, to create more, uh, to make sure that your client feels feel feels more has more confidence. Feel you know to to find out ways and solutions during the shoot to make sure that something that client might not be willing to do or they might not feel hundred percent of what they're doing, you as a director can go and and, and make it work. So pretty much um, that is what I try to do with this work. You know, workshop. Of course, we're gonna discuss about the lighting and and the, and how I came up with good posing and and you know and the storytelling that we do and all the stuff right because it's a worship it's not just good. but but the main idea is to teach people and even photographers to teach photographers to do a real video of boudoir not a video that is making is, is doing like a making or or a backup scene of whatever the photographer is doing during the boudoir session so creating your own uh, concept and that is something that is going to be probably the main goal during the workshop. And and, and again, if you're not doing uh, work uh, uh, boudoirs, or you find that you don't find, it, or you realize that it's not that easy to get those clients, it, it's it, the the goal at the end is learning how to create that type of connection with that client. Um, and when I talk about collection, I mean when I talk about connection, I'm not talking about. Uh, Oh, how beautiful is your hair? No, 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 that I'm talking about really connecting, really making that person feel uh, that we can make this work, that um, that it's real. It's not going to be easy. Keeping the things real is the way that I normally work with everybody, not just my clients, even the people that work with me. So, and that's that's definitely going to be something that people can learn from it. Oh, that's great. That's that's really good. Um, you know, um, Jose, um, when, you know, we we looked out for the best out there, um, for the best photographers to come to this conference, uh, you know, portrait photographers, family photographers, and when they said you were going to come to the conference, Jose, um, I got excited. I, I was like, okay, you know, they're bringing the best um, – and, you know, and that's what I, how I feel about your work. I, you know, the, the bringing the best video offer. Um, guys, I could go on and on about Jose, and and I've always said it's it's not really what I'm telling you guys. What I'm I'm telling you here in this in this video chat room, but is it's the end result is what these photographers are and videographers, cinematographers are doing. You know. Um, and and their work s speaks volumes about themselves. And as you can see here, Jose, he's just a you know very relaxed, chilled person. But 
wait till you see his work. I mean, this guy's like, you know, really easy going and stuff. And, I, and, and that's really cool. Um, as you can see, he's very open. You guys can walk up to him at the conference. I'm sure he'll be able to lend himself just for, for a couple of minutes for you guys. Um, but more than anything, and I've, and I've seen a lot of videographers and I have, you know, very good friends. I'm also a photographer here in, in the Rio Grande Valley and I've, I've worked with some of the best down here. But uh, also, Jose, I mean, his work, I mean, some of these videographers even look up to this guy here. Um, guys, I don't want you to take my word or his word for it. Um, this, this, I want you to see some of his videos. So we're going to get started here. We're going to just dig in um, so he can preview um, some of his work here. If you give me a second, I'm going to go ahead and go into one story called um, the Paris story, the love story. Uh, uh, in Paris, correct, uh, Jose? And correct. Um, so give me one second, I'll load up this video. Well, in the meantime, we can talk probably about what, what this love story is. I remember at some point I was in um, doing a tour in Europe of my workshops, and at some point, to be honest, a, photo, um, 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 a, a filmmaker, good friend, a very talented guy in Europe, um, tell this client, hey, listen, I have a guy who is going to be by casualty in Europe the next month. And what you're looking for, probably he's the guy. He, and you're trying to build a story. You're trying to do something unique. Uh, and, and that's what we did. Um, I knew that I had a challenge. I knew that there's a lot of people who went to uh, Paris to do, uh, you know, love story videos before but I knew that I have the challenge to create something different and create something that after the years, people still watching it and saying, oh my God, that was so good. And, and again, the storytelling is, and the concept and, and, and the details is what makes this probably film. Um, You're so right. Really Listen, right. The, the videos, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the videos that you, you shown us, um, has this great connection and, and it doesn't feel and I'm sorry for using the word video because it's not even a video it, it really is a movie um, the I don't know whether it's the way you direct your your character or the, 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 the bride and the groom or the way you direct their everything from, from the lighting to the way they act they come across it really does feel like a film and, and you do a very great a very good way directing it you know it, it has to come from the director because um your 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 filming or your cinematography looks seamless you know and and well, i think to be honest with you uh thank you so much first of all i, I don't like when, when people give me too much credit because i am kind of shy for those things <laughs> but i can tell you something uh if i tell you sometimes those films then not even they were not even uh, coordinate. Uh, there was not even coordination for it. That that video in uh, in Paris, I was just I remember in an airplane from New York to London, and I started work working in a paper notes, kind of like a you know a transcript, but the, the reality it was just a few notes of what I was trying to come up with. And during when I was in the airport, I saw um, you know that lock pad, el candado, like we say in Spanish, that lock pad, and and I and I said, oh my God, I remember there is a bridge that people go and put the locks, and I seen that before, so let's let's play with that. So then I bought it on the on the airport, and in the next airplane I started writing it down. So some of the stuff that I do, and some of the stuff that you see sometimes in my blog. They are just footage that in the morning we didn't we didn't have an idea what we're gonna be shooting. It was just coming at the right minute. And when I do my workshops, I always say to the people, listen, the, the, the most that you're gonna learn from me, and that's what some of the guys that they've been in my workshop they say, that I feel proud with because now when they see the work and I said, Oh my god, I I feel happy that you know I was able to help you or somehow contribute with something for you. But they say, I always remember, you teach me to be so quick and deciding and creating and, and looking for things to make things happen. I even have a video there, another we're going to see the Paris, that is called The Mask. It was done, it was done during my workshop in, in Venice, in Italy. 
And same thing, we didn't know what we were going to shoot that day. And we came up with this story about the mask that people love it. But everything was done during the workshop. And I teach people to be smart when you're shooting. Why? Because even during the weddings, the time that you have to create good footage is very minimal. You don't have that much time. So you have to learn how to be more smart using your imagination and creating. And, and, and to be honest, yes, it's a talent and, and you have to develop the skill, but it can be done if you have the right tools. Um, Jose, uh, you know, <coughs> like I've, I've always said, and I've said it in my conferences also, uh, my conference speakers, it, it, it's, it, it's really the work that we deliver. I mean, you are a very uh, talented person, and, uh, and I could see that you're a very visual person. You can see everything right before it happens, and you just bring it together, um, like you were explaining with the lock. Um, I'm just going to dig into the video so the people that are watching out there they can see exactly what we're talking about <laughs> because I mean uh, I mean Jose you're you have some amazing experiences uh, and, and we enjoy listening to them I, I even enjoy I mean I can sit here uh, listen to you all day but I, I really want to show them what you what you what you can really do you know so I'm gonna I'm just gonna jump into the video if you don't mind here Jose and I, I'm sorry sure. to interrupt you no my I, pleasure I have to show you I really have to show everyone out there uh, some of the videos. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, Jose has a, a, a website, um, but he usually posts a lot of his videos. If you guys really want to dig into all the all the videos that he's done, I would highly recommend that you go to his blog or even his uh, fan page. Correct, Jose? The Facebook stuff like that. Yeah, that's when we have the most recent stuff. Yeah. Do you mind sharing that link with us? Um, uh, the Facebook. Do you just search for Ortiz Films on the Facebook? Um, and on the on the uh, blog, it's uh, you can get joseortizfilms.com. Uh, that's the blog, joseortizfilms.com, and the and the Facebook, it's uh, Ortiz Films. <clears throat> it's very easy at this moment. I think when you search on Google for Jose Ortiz Films, it's gonna give you my blog and stuff like that. So if you can just go through the Google and you find it real. I mean, I, I always say I'm, I feel very honored um, that people watch my stuff. To be honest, uh, yeah, time is valuable, and 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 for me, knowing that there's people out there that they can spend time watching my stuff, it's 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 awesome. <laughs> Here we go, guys. For you guys that don't know Jose Jose Ortiz's work, here it is. Can you watch this on your end, Jose? Um, I think uh, it's kind of uh, having delays. I don't know if that's what the people see. Um, let's see how I can make this. Video. Allô. Allô. Bonjour mon cœur, comment tu vas Ça va bien et toi Bien merci. Qu'est-ce que tu fais Ben je voulais t'inviter à venir boire un café. J'ai une surprise pour toi. Comment une surprise Normalement tu ne fais jamais de surprise. Oui une surprise. Ça fait longtemps que je l'attends. Oui d'accord donc euh, si tu veux on peut se retrouver au café comme d'habitude. Comme <coughs> d'habitude. Ok à tout à l'heure alors. Bisous. Bisous. Ciao. How many days were you out there doing this? Salut. Assis toi. Comment ça va? Bien, merci. Tu veux rien boire? Non, merci. Rien du tout. Non, ça ira. Ouais. 
Bon, alors, euh, je t'ai demandé de venir parce que j'ai une surprise pour toi. Euh, ça fait longtemps que j'y pensais. Je trouve que euh, euh, c'est le moment. Donc. Euh, j'ai hâte, oui. C'est quoi Oh. Euh, un cadenas Pourquoi un cadenas Oh, c'est Simi ben, Arias. Can you hear me on the phone? Oui. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, le cadenas, en fait. I'm just watching the video, to be honest. Every time that I watch that video, I don't watch it that many times. But Plus personne ne parle de ça. It worships to watch it. It reminds me of so many, so many things that we went through <laughs> to make it work. Pour les détruire, tout ce qui est... Oh, how many days were you out there filming this? No, no, just we, everything was shot in one day, and then the next morning before we were leaving, we shot the part, small portions uh, in the morning. Um, It was all quick because I was, I was going from uh, So I had like a few, two days in between to go and shoot this. Uh, I have to give a credit to a friend, Nelson, who came and helped me just to, you know, be around and, and show me the areas because I've never been before in Paris. In Paris. If you try to do this, I don't even know in Paris, it's going to be, it's going to take you days just to find out where the spots are and, and what can be, be done. So with this person pretty much, we, you know, he knew me because he was attending one of my workshops and, and we, we ended up able to nail the whole thing for the couple. Um, also the couple put so much, you know, so much effort to make this happen and, and, and to make sure that we that we got the shots that we needed. They were not from France, they were from Luxembourg. So they, they drove like probably, I don't know, six hours or four hours to be in Paris. Uh, of course they can speak French because Luxembourg pretty much, you know, is right next to it so they, everybody speaks French. But, um, but it's amazing. Uh, uh, we came up with this And it's one of those things that uh, even at these days, I still watching it over and over. Um, it's very nice. And again, nice. this story is not, it's not just giving a shot of the couple right in front of the, actually that's probably the only shot that you're gonna see the Eiffel Tower. Um, like if, when people go and shoot in Paris, the first thing that they do, they go to the tower and they stay, they stay there shooting everything in there. In my case, I tried to develop something different. Like, yes, you know that you're in Paris, but it's not like you want to make it too obvious. Um, yes, you want to bring the, the, the bridge of, with the, all the padlocks and stuff, but you want to you wanna guide, you want to create some content that is going to put you in that bridge. If she was not getting that padlock instead of the wedding ring, we were not shooting on the, on the, on the bridge because he had to be connected to it. Um, that's the difference between doing a video with good content uh, or just going and shooting whatever you want because you're in Paris. No, you have to uh, always uh, justify every shot, everything that you do. Um, that's what happened with Paris. Yes, it was a challenge. It was, uh, it was, Very simple. I don't even remember if I use a tripod. Everything was with a monopod and, a, and my glide cam. And, um, and yes, we, we made it. We made it. I think the video is still really good, not because the shots. It's just because the storytelling and right. the way that we put all together. That was <clears throat> um, Jose, I'm going to jump into another video here. Um, it's called The Waterfall. Uh, oh, yeah. That's uh, another story in the meantime. That way people can see it. Uh, when, when we went to shoot with that couple, it was the day, the first day of the wedding. You know, it's an Indian wedding, they have multiple days. So the first day in the morning uh, is when we're going to shoot with them. None of this information, was, we, we never had this information. Like, I, I didn't have an idea that I was doing a video called the waterfalls or, or we had the, we didn't even have the location where we're going to shoot. Why? Because the, the, the bride was the first day of the wedding, it was Thanksgiving you know, the turkey day. <laughs> and pretty much in the United States, that day, mostly everything is closed. Right. Um, so we didn't have the venue that she had that we were supposed to be shooting, it was closed. And I find out with the help of the planner about this place, 
<clears throat> and um, and I asked the bride, do you think that you have in your house a book called Waterfalls? And she said, no, but I can look on the library and find one. Okay, why? Don't worry. We're going to start from there. And we came up with this story about the waterfalls and, and the beauty of her talking on her own native language and, and the way that we did it. We played with the with the situations and, and the locations and we end up putting a video that is, you know, one of my favorites and also for the clients, you know, this was a high end wedding. We're not talking about, you know, a very average wedding out there. It was a high end wedding. So the client, in top of that, that video was the same day, Eddie. The same video you see on the blog, Bright, if you're, if you're watching me, you know that it's true. That same video you see there on the blog is the same one that we produced that night. We have top people helping me to do this during the editing process. Uh, some other videographers, I'm trying to say. And again, because this wedding, they were trying to show this video already finished, complete, the last day of the reception. And again, even the first day, two days before we show it, we didn't have a clue where we we're going to be shooting. So one example of how you can come up with ideas and if you can connect your locations, your situation, the, the people, the characters, the story, you end up with something that is beautiful. Jose, so you're telling me this is a high-end wedding. You had your entourage here. You had your, all your people work here working um, and working hard to put this video at the end of the night. How many people are we talking about? Uh, no, no, the, well, the, here we have an, I have another guy, a friend, uh, shooting, good cinematographer, and, and also I have my assistant, three people. I mean, if I'm, if I'm shooting uh, send the edit, we're two, three. If we if we not have to present the send the edit, it's, it's two. I don't like to, I tell you, I don't videos. In that blog, there's a wedding that I just shoot it by myself. Mm -hmm. um, situation. Yeah, I'm, I'm very fast. <laughs> very intense. Your you're, you're working hard. Hey, yeah. hey, very intense. I carry a lot of equipment just by myself. I still remember our friend Jaramillo telling me, you're crazy, dude. You got so much gear, and you're like carrying like four bags at the same time. Like, yeah, I'm intense, but again, it's because I play hard, and I always say, you want to play on the major leagues, you got to do what you got to do, right? So that's what I do. And yeah, maybe now I look like the guy that is calm, but when I'm shooting a wedding, I am a totally different person. You're a beast. <laughs> I huh? probably don't like me when I'm shooting weddings. <laughs> you're a beast. You turn into a beast, huh? <laughs> An animal. Awesome. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, there's other videos, guys, and, and I just got the word that it's looking, a, uh, that video looked a little blurry. Guys, there, these, again, I repeat, these videos that you're just seeing from, from Jose Ortiz, they're on, their, on his blog, and they're also on the Jose Ortiz uh, fan page. So you guys could go on there and see them for yourself. We're about to watch another one, and that was right off of Vimeo. We hope that this one doesn't look blurry or, or whatever you guys saw the last one. It's not the video itself. Um, it's the connection that we're having here with Google. So please uh, hang in with us, and uh, we apologize for that. We're going to see if this one plays a little nicer, a little smoother. Um, I, I really have. I really think it has to do a lot with the uh, the connection. So, guys, we're going to play the, this one that's called uh, Waterfall again. Um, Jose Ortiz uh, has explained to us that. He's putting this, he's doing a MacGyver. <laughs> he's putting everything together uh, and, and as he's working, you know, he's, he's visualizing it and, and he's putting it together right in front of his eyes. And uh, so guys, uh, check out this other video that we have for, for everyone. Give me one second. So here we go. First of all, I want to thank every one of you to make it here, not only just coming, but putting this whole event together. We want to thank you and every one of your nice, loving family for joining this occasion. And we now invite you to be a part of this large United family. <coughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Journey to Bath. 
जानने की वे तारा की दूसरे पार क्या है वो अक्सर एक रहस्य सा महसूस होता है उसी जर्नल की तरह हमारी जिंदगी भी अनजान मोद से गुजरती है ऐसे ही कुछ अनजान मोल हमारी जिंदगी को बदल देते हैं मेरी जिंदगी में एक ऐसा मोल आया मैं एक ऐसे चिराग से मिली जिससे मैं जिंदगी का रिश्ता बांधी इस रिश्ते में जो जादू है वो शब्दों में नहीं बांधा जाता We are very thankful for the choice that Avni has made, choosing Asad for us. She made another choice, and she chose us as her parents. I loved Avni yesterday. I love her today, and I will love her tomorrow. For every tomorrow. Today. We do not need today to know about our love, but today is very special. Today is special because of all of you, our friends, our family. For a video that's not rehearsed. Again, uh, <laughs> it, it looks awesome. It looks just great, and and Thank just you. like what I mean, it's <laughs> it's it's not easy. I mean, you have a wedding that you don't have that much time. You you oh, know yeah. that it's not just about you. There's always a photographer doing their job too. So you have to try to come up with your shots. Try not to interrupt too much the clients either, because it's a wedding, right? So good thing is when we have a chance to shoot with the couple. And, Because they book us. They book us also to shoot all those um, um, shots that we do. You know, additional to the wedding events, it's something that the client book me and pay extra for it. So, um, and what I'm trying to say with this is like they're expecting good content because uh, otherwise they don't they don't book you for that additional content or additional shots that you're going to be doing to enhance the story um so we have to come up with something that is good we have to make sure that we can coordinate and and be ready i always say on my workshops you have to be ready with plan a b and c for some reason plan a is not working you have plan, plan b and b is not great either let's go with the plan c so it has to be uh something has to be set up uh, as a backup always just in case because again it's a wedding if we're not shooting here uh, a movie or a tv show that we you know that is not going on the air until the next day you know we are shooting weddings and sometimes you have to edit and show the videos the same night that is a challenge for for everybody out there very beautiful and it just beautifully said also uh, jose very very nice um Thank again you. again an, another masterpiece of, of Jose Ortiz um, guys you know we, we you know we're bringing you photographers and we've been interviewing photographers portrait photographers wedding photographers photographers that take it to another uh, uh, another extreme or another level you know of, of photography here's a cinematographer that you know taking it beyond just just a wedding video um, just more like a like a real movie and and that's what really makes it so interesting to to see your videos Jose I mean they they I could sit down and watch them all day I mean I, I don't even know these people but it makes makes it look really awesome and it makes me look like a real movie and and that's what you're doing here and I really like that Jose uh, and, and you show it to us over and over again I mean the 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 artistry that you put the talent I mean I could see it I and I, I can see how passionate you are uh creating these films for everyone to see and that's yeah, just thank you I, i will say also as we were talking earlier before we were going live um i will say uh, part of the reason is also that i that i value what i do 
I'm not a guy who is shooting weddings every weekend. I, I pre-select what project and what bride I want to shoot. Uh, and I say pre-select means that there has to be so many factors involved. I have to feel that there's a connection. I have to feel that that bride really values this type of work. Um, so yes, I do my part, but it's a combination. It's a teamwork. It has to be also the people who are backing me up. Um, uh, some of my workshops I've been showing, I mean, my, my man, Henry, Henry is the guy who has been working with me since day one. He's not a videographer. He's not. But he knows every single thing from my gear, my equipment, and what I'm, he even can tell what I'm thinking in here. So for those people, even photographers who are always wondering, oh, who could be my best uh, assistant, I will say is that person who really knows you. This is my example. I mean, this mostly all this work, when we're not doing a send the edit, it's done me and that guy. At some point it was my wife, but when we started going international and traveling, it was impossible because we have family. But but this guy, he's been there with me and pretty much uh, he learned what it has to be done and he proves that you don't have to be uh, a filmmaker or going to school to do good work. You can uh, be disciplined, you can uh, be ready to anticipate any error and that's going to give you uh, the chances to create good footage, good product, even in pictures or video. So um, that's that's probably the, the case here, you know. Uh, it's just the fact that we are uh, anticipating and making sure that we're doing our 100% and having a, a backup all the time. Um, uh, uh, my workshops are always based on that. Uh, look, I'm using my engineering background to find out ways to do things more simple or to make sure things are going to be working uh, with anticipation. You know, ahead of time, I know. I have to know. I cannot wait until the moment to decide if it's good or not. Uh, Jose, Jose and I, uh, we actually agreed. We both agreed that um, as far as the technical side, and I'm sure you, you guys are watching this of... of um, you know, videographers or cinematographers are just getting started and uh, you want to know more of Jose. Uh, we both agreed that he was going to share all his technical aspects of how he put his video on the conference, on the workshop. Um, you know, you know, this is, this information is very valuable to him. Um, it, it has taken him years to build it and uh, all his techniques and stuff like that from, from the cameras, everything. Uh, you know, just like any one of us that we, we put our 100% into it, uh, we, we, we do a lot of reading or, you know, whatever it is or, you know, inspirations and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And, and Jose has done that. So, guys, um, I encourage you to come see him and, and lock in. If you're into creating movies and, and cinematography for, for, for weddings, I encourage you guys. Um, I tell you to come see Jose Ortiz. I've seen him in other conferences. This guy is truly amazing, truly talented. Him and his, you know, he was telling me he has a partner that he's, he sees his vision. And, and like he just said, you know, it's something very moving and, and even inspired me right now when he says, hey, you know what? The, the key is having somebody, not that shoots like you or that has a camera, but somebody that sees your vision too, you know, mm -hmm. that's walking in the same direction as you are, you know, because uh and and that's beautiful that's that was very very good that you said that because you know i myself have you know i've had photographers or second photographers that go help me but they're not seeing what i'm seeing you know and and jose and his, and his team they, they see they connect they know exactly where they're going and it's like a basketball team they know when to shoot the ball when to go right or left you know they're not getting in each other's way and and that that's awesome they, they, yeah they, correct actually to be honest even for me, if I'm going to help someone, it's more difficult than when I'm working with my own guy uh, because we already know what we need to make the work that we do. Uh, when you're working with someone else, no matter how, how much, it's, you know, the, the experience that you have, how good you are, uh, there's always people, everybody has their own different ways to do things. So um, that's probably the most challenging thing to try to learn with other people. I mean, try to work with other people, with other people and try to understand what they're looking for from you. I mean, especially on the videos because
there's a lot of storytelling involved and and um, and so many things happening during the day. So uh, yeah, definitely, like you were saying, I'm totally agree. I, I, I um, you know, and and uh, <clears throat> uh, please forgive me for saying this, Jose, but I think a lot of people out there has this mentality or this thinking that the money is really on only photography and not so much on videography or cinematography on filmmaking for weddings. And you are the perfect example of how if you, if you do anything good and you come out with your own concepts and your own ideas, you're going to be able to charge whatever you want, you know, and people will come find you wherever you're at. Um, before this, before this interview, guys, uh, as, as Jose was saying, we had a small talk and he was explaining to me that he hasn't seen a bride face to face uh, before booking him in years. You know, they, they see his work and they fall in love with it. And by the time you know it, he gets an email saying, Hey, you know what? We want to hire you. And that's it. You know, whatever it costs. I mean, he's, um, this this man has built himself and so much and so well he's he's marketed himself very well and, and, and I think yeah I can before you continue I can share something because you know it was never like that you right. know? When I started in the business um, it, it, I remember I had to meet with the clients I still remember and I always say on some workshops that I do there was a Sunday that I was in my house back in the days meeting with clients, three clients local from my area. Um, none of them, they booked me. And I spent the entire Sunday with clients that they don't even book me. And that was back in the days when I was charging just like $2,000 for wedding videos, you know? It was like my first year, second year. Uh, that was the day that I say, this has to change. I cannot lose a Sunday with my kid and, and my, and my back in the days it was just one, uh, and not being able to live in book. So it changed. It changed uh, at the point that, of course, I mean, now I charge seven times what I was charging before, but what I'm saying is I don't even have to meet with the clients because the way that I build my business, the clients totally get it. I, they don't. They don't have to see me. They're. They're not booking me. They're booking my work. They're booking me as a facilitator of what that work is going to be. But they booking me uh, because the work that I'm going to do and that work. I always tell them, listen, you can meet with me, see many videos that I'm going to show you. But your wedding is going to be different. Your wedding is going to be different to everybody. If you go through my videos, you're going to see they all look different every single person is different so you trying to get um, you know uh, uh, try to convince a client that face to face is going to help the, 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 the product no I still don't get me wrong I still talking with clients on the phone uh, because I want to hear a little bit of them but there's no need for us to to go and, and, and meet them and to be honest part of the reason is because my clientele is is not is high end, and 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 they're they're eighty percent of them. They're not even living in Florida State. They live in California, New York, other places, right? So they cannot even meet with me. And and the more that you shoot people with that type of level, they don't have even time sometimes for you. That's the truth. Uh, some of them they're gonna book you. Some of them don't. You know, um, but again, it's it's. I now I have more time to for me and 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 for the business instead of spending too much time with booking. However, um, in photography, I see that people sometimes have to meet more with clients because um, there's uh, there's certain type of. Uh, perception from the bride that they feel like my photographer I, I need to know and he's going to be doing my my engagement pictures before even the wedding so right. you you establish a connection even before me like i said some of my clients i don't see them until i see them the day of the wedding 
and they and they say hi to me like they know me because they said, "Oh my God, I see all your videos a lot." But this, but they never, I never met them before. Maybe just a phone call for one hour or two. Um, yeah, I've been very selective in how I use my time and how because again, the business that I'm doing is exclusive now, and 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 I I understand that not everybody's gonna book me. Uh, I I cannot even have the 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 energy to be shooting every weekend the stuff that I shoot. You know, it's very difficult. Having said that, Jose, how many weddings do you do a year? How many? How, how many? Well, this past year, I did. I don't. I don't count them. I'm very bad. It's my wife who has all the contracts and stuff. But I think it was there were like twelve. This year, they might be like eleven. I still booking. And right now, almost about to book in December one, and but this year might be like ten or eleven. But that's all you need. I mean, to be honest, some of those weddings are Indian weddings, so they're 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 multiple days, and we're talking about big check contracts. So, yeah. you know, yeah, it's a one wedding, but it will take me probably like a month just to. But in my case, I'm still the editor. I'm still the person. I'm pretty much a one man show. And again, this is my type of business. There's people who have. Themes and associates and, and and different ways to approach their market and their clients. Right in my case, what I sell to the bride is more exclusive. You hear me from the first time on the phone. If I don't, if you don't like me, that's fine. That's the idea why we're talking the first time. I am the one shooting your wedding. I am the one editing, and okay. because it's me editing, it's prime time. So it's gonna cost more because it, it takes time. Very good. Well, I cannot shoot that many weddings a year anyway. So what I do is I keep a price and I look for those clients who can really pay me what I what I think they should be paid. Um, Jose, here's a personal question for you. Um, and for those videographers, cinematographers that are listening here, that you can't charge what a photographer can. Here's a perfect example of a, of a cinematographer that can charge, uh, for the most part, uh, more than there's not. always a balance. I'll tell you with my experience talking with people all over the world, you know, doing this, and when I go to different conventions in Europe, Moscow, where, whatever, right? In, even in the United States, no matter where you go, photographer always has the the lead in terms of the bride is always looking first for the photographer. Mostly all the cases I have weddings that are, they've been booking me and they don't even know. What is the photographer is going to be? But the tendency, the, 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 the pattern is that you're going to see that they normally book more the photographer. They sometimes even willing to spend more on the photography. But, okay, they're winning on that side. But the other side is the fact that filmmakers were not that many. I have a lot of friend photographers, they say, are you kidding me? What you're doing is so difficult. I'd rather stay on the picture. You know, like, there's so much gear that you have to have and so much stuff that you have to do. No way. So, and it's a reality. It's more difficult. So, now, what do you that's go on your favor because there's not that many out there. So, it gives you the chance that if you're willing to work hard, you can be in completely balance and both of them doing the same amount of money. Maybe the reality is like, for the video and weddings is not like the, the the you know the cherry on top, but you still having the fact that you are you know there's way less people doing videos, so now you have the chance to compete in in more weddings, you know, because there's not that many out there. Was it a, a question? <clears throat> and, um, I guess you you don't have to answer this, but a lot of people are wondering um, what. I guess what's your highest paid paid wedding or that you done or what's your average on the high end weddings? Uh, what do you? you know, listen, I honestly never talk even on the photos or places. I don't talk too much about my pricing because I am a I'm a very real person and and I think I'm, mostly everybody is kind of like faking the prices. <laughs> I, I don't I don't even want to feel feel people like oh what I'm trying. It's probably what he's saying is probably, probably true. But like I was saying to do to you earlier, I done weddings that they just require me to go for a few hours right next to my house for thirty eight hundred dollars or four thousand dollars. And I had weddings, one day wedding that I 
been able to get nine ninety five hundred dollars for the wedding. Also, it's very hard to know the price because sometimes they book you for one price, but then they, you know, have you do after sales and you sell more stuff after the wedding or in the process of the wedding. So pretty much that is, you know, that's kind of like a price and pricing is going to change every time. I even tell the client, I cannot give you a price until I see what exactly I'm going to be doing in this wedding. Where is the wedding? You know, and how difficult it is because shooting a wedding in California is going to be three days of work, even if it's a one wedding because we have to fly all the way there. So pricing changes a lot. Um, and then we have, I do a lot of the Indian weddings. Those are big checks, you know. I, I can tell that I've done money in Indian weddings that I never imagined in my life that it was possible to be done. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I was never, I was never imagined. And, and again, I mean, I, 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 I always, be, I always been very real with people. There's not that much market for that type of money, you know. There's few guys doing that work. You don't feel bad because you don't see that money because even me, not every day I'm gonna get a thirty thousand dollar check for. A wedding in India, you know, wedding production or, or 28 or 22,000. You know, there's been so many different, but yeah, there are prices like that out there if you work really hard. Uh, sadly, you know, people think that, oh, the most that they're going to give me is six grand. No, you can make the money. I mean, if I make it, you can make it. It's just a matter of make that people feel that you're exclusive and, and the people who are really want to have something good. They associate good with good money, and and if you go cheap, they already feel that you're cheap too. I I, I proved that uh, um, uh, during the years, you know. That was the, um, yeah, go ahead. I, I have to ask you this question: uh, How do you get inspired? How how is it that you're able to come out with these uh, amazing, you know, movies or? or you well, know, first of all, actually, um, first of all, I am in a. And excuse me for a second, I'm gonna connect the computer. We're live, but you know, as we are live, we got things going on. Let me connect the, the, the power plug before we lose it. But in the meantime, hold on. In the meantime, I have to tell you, look, look, I, I've, been, uh, I've been inspired by so many things. When I started the business, I was looking for a hobby. I was, not, I was looking for something that would let me express myself, and I thought, shooting stuff with my camera it will help me to express things that i have inside that i want to say or think or 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 showcase to someone you know that's it was a method of expression for me that and, and i always got inspired by the same people and, and if you ask me people in the industry who got me inspired oh there's so many sometimes they're not even the people who are really well known some of them i've been inspired by them but but there's so many. I think them. Hold on a second. Excuse me. I think that the more, the more that I, how can I say this? The more that I try to get inspired by the most simple things, the 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 better. Because sometimes on the most simple things is when we get a lot of inspiration. Right. Oh, well, let me let me put it to you this way. What's your favorite movie? You know what? I don't watch that many movies. What's <laughs> your favorite movie? For real? Uh, Back to the Future. <laughs> wow. Yeah, even my kids, they love it. And, and, and I know the guy who did the Back in Time documentary recently. I don't know if you're familiar with. Uh, he's, a, he's a wedding videographer, actually. And he ended up meeting with Michael J. Fox and, and putting this together, Back in Time. So if you guys had a chance to watch it. It's amazing. I'll tell you, I was jealous because I told him, listen, I wish that I was coming with that idea before you <laughs> because he did the documentary for Back to the Future. Back to the Future probably is the movie that I love. And it's because the way that they were thinking and put all together so perfect to make it look, it was a different vision. I mean, for me. But I don't watch that many movies. I got to be honest with you. I'm more about documentaries. I love the documentaries. Uh, I'm an, I forget a lot. Like, I can watch a movie and I forget the title. Uh, back in the days, well, been like three years ago, I was helping um, at some point uh, they were rowing to shoot uh, at the Oscars. And at some point, I was even the one leading the shoot uh, one year. 
And I, I remember me shooting at the Oscars, and a lot of the actors, I don't even, I didn't even know who they were. And, and, and he was like, dude, you don't know who is this guy, you know? No, I mean, by names, I don't know. So. But yeah, <laughs> I would say probably, um, I've been inspired by the music too. My music. That's probably, if you ask me, I've been inspired more by music videos and, and people who sing songs and, and what they, they, they you know, I, I had a chance to know people in the music industry and uh, well-known Spanish music industry seniors and stuff like that. And I, I, I would say that the way that they write songs, it helps a lot to be inspired. And, right. and I would say that's probably my top secret. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Jose, what, what type of music do you listen to? Uh, what, what do you like to listen all to? Type, all type. I, you, I hear from rock, uh, uh, pop music, uh, salsa music. I've always been a big fan of Mark Anthony, who is from you know my country. And uh, um, I think the way that he expressed and, and, and the, 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 the command presence that he has on the stage, it's amazing. I um, um, had a chance to meet him before. And I always said, the guy, the way that he started from scratch. Um, um, it's funny because the mom of Mark Anthony is in, uh, it's in, it's from Guayama, from the same hometown that I am in Puerto Rico. But the thing is, yeah, there's people like that. Um, in Puerto Rico, we have so many singers, and Chayanne is one guy that I really like. He's from Puerto Rico too, and very humble. I uh, had a chance to meet his family many years ago, met him. I know him, you know, know the family very well, and I always remember how how he was able to keep things very simple and humble, and, and no matter how much he said he had, it was all about the family. I would say he inspired me a lot, even when I was doing my other type of profession. Um, I said, you know, I want to be like this guy, how humble he is, how he puts the family first, and, and, and that's what I do too. But there's so many in the music. I will say in the music, I, I, I had a chance to meet so many, uh, you know, known uh, performers, and, and and they inspire me a lot. Very good. Jose. Well, this has been really good, Jose. I, I'm going to start wrapping it up, but before I do, I want to show everyone the Boudoir video. <laughs> um, I think that because you're also talking about it in your, in your workshop. Exactly. And not just that. I want to put that as an example. We were not supposed to be shooting a Boudoir. We were supposed to be shooting uh, a bride and a groom because it was a workshop in BNH in New York, and and but then we never end up finding the guy and we have the girl and I asked her, hey, are you willing to do this? And she said yes. Okay, so bring tomorrow some clothes, some sexy clothes, and we come up with something. So even the people in the workshop, they were kind of in shock because they were expecting to see a bride and a groom, and we they end up realizing we got this half naked woman in the room and we're going to be doing a boudoir. But again, I was telling them from the beginning, this is the perfect time to realize that, how, that this is how weddings are. You don't know what is coming up. You don't know what you're going to be shooting. You don't know what factors are going to be involved that day that you might have to change completely what you have in your mind. So let's put together this and make it work and do one of those wedding boudoir videos that you've never seen before. I honestly don't see another one with that style before. Um, but again, it was just footage from a workshop. I want to clarify that because um, people might think that this was done, you know, with a lot of time and, and we came up with ideas. No, no, this was done. And, 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 and I'm about to shoot another one in another workshop. And, uh, but again, uh, that's always, I'm not even thinking in what I'm going to be doing. I'll, I'll let it go and I'll do it the day that it has to be done. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, for a person that puts it on the fly, does it on the fly, um, you know, I, I can't say enough. You, let me just play the video uh, of this boudoir, a boudoir video that you put together um, that's that same day for a workshop in New York. And uh, like uh, Jose explained here earlier, we like to think, when we think boudoir, we think the photographer photographed the boudoir session. Well, guys, you're about to see uh, an amazing boudoir done by a cinematographer, and uh, check it out for yourselves. It's 
it's a it's a tough night for me because my little <laughs> <brother, laughs> I don't think that guy, I don't think that guy wants to be half naked. <laughs> uh, yeah. and where is that? Hold on a second. It is, is that there? I know that we we realized today that some of my Vimeo links they have to oh, be the link. I you apologize. Don't really have the same issue there. I don't yeah, know. I don't really want to see that guy naked. You're right. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Right. So let me click on that. And this, by the way, we do have this link. Actually, if you go to my Facebook too, it's there. Um, this is. If you go to the Facebook, you might see it there. Easier to navigate. Yeah, there you go. You got it there. New York, это очень интересный город. This is a combination of Russian sex on the city, New York thing. I think it came up so perfect. Again, guys, um, if this video is skipping for some reason, I can see it perfectly fine. It doesn't look blurry at all. But if it's skipping on your end, uh, Jose Ortiz just mentioned it. He has it on his uh, webpage. He has it on his blog also and his website. And you can also see the same video uh, on our fan page, the Amity Conference uh, fan page. So, so check it out, guys. Uh, see it for yourself. Yeah, it's one of those. Uh, the, the, I think the challenge during the boudoirs is how you keep it classy and, and and nice and at the same time really hot. And and again, and and building that trust with the with the client, you know. Um, this time, of course, that's 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 not a real bride, you know. It was someone that we were h h hiding for the workshop, but but it can be done by a bride. You never know when. Um, or in my case, I've been hired twice to do for for you know models uh, some stuff like that just because they saw that video, you know, and they want to have for their portfolio. I'm not being allowed to use it because, of course, it's their private property. But uh, but yeah, I've been hired to do a few stuff like that just because I did that video. I love that film look you got to it, and and the soft light. I mean, your lighting is just amazing. Then uh, you know, we working with the light that we have from the window. We didn't have that much light. It was just my glycam, my monopod, and all the students in the room. But even the girl, she didn't had a chance to do something like this before. So the guys who were on that workshop, they probably remember me kind of like fighting with her to make her be on the character. And I remember at the end of the day, she was kind of mad with me because she said, oh my God, you treat me so bad. But then when she saw the product, she said, oh my God, no wonder you put so much pressure on me and, and you know it was because i said you can do even way more of what you're doing again it's easy in the pictures why because it's more post but when you have to act move and, and it's more like a dancing if you get a choreography involved and you have to it's not just a model you know it takes a little bit more uh, time you, you know you know, Jose, if I were to see this video on national TV, I, I would really think that it would be a, a, a commercial for Victoria's Secrets or something. Because yeah. it, it's just well, probably because the girl is also a top model. You know, it's uh, one of those things. It's a combination of everything. You know, the the, the right person. Um, she was really good on pictures, and she saw me so much. But once she was on on front of the camera to do video. In the rough footage, you can even see, you know, me and her arguing about you're not giving me what I'm looking for, you know. But that's my work as a director, you know. I I, I cannot sugarcoat anything, you know. Like if it's not coming well, let's fix it. Let's make it work better, right? So that's kind of like what I did in that case. Um, I will say I felt proud because it was a challenge. We were not expecting something like that. Um, I always take care. I would my my biggest fear was more about not doing something that is not going to look classy, that is not going to look as nice. You know, I was looking for something that somehow when people watch it, even my 10-year-old kid can watch it. You know, like it's not like it's too much. Uh, so that's how, that's, what we, how, that's how we did it. Um, and it came up really good. Um, we're coming with something. The, 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 we, I set the bar 
uh, hi. So next time, uh, let's see what happens. But I'm I'm coming with something new in a boudoir, and 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 in th this time, I'm not putting a pressure. I, I don't feel that I'm ready to do it, but we're we're coming with something. The good thing is this time there's gonna be sponsors involved because even this video may sponsors some of the sponsors that I have said, you know what, if you wanna do a next one, um, I'm more than welcome to you know support this thing. I think it's great. And I'm talking about well known sponsors in the industry. So uh, again, you see it's not about the production or or it's more about bringing the right content and and making sure that you're presenting what what people want to see. Well, the, congratulations. Um, I mean, that video is really amazing. All your videos, actually, Jose. I mean, about, like I like I've told everyone since we started the video uh, the video chat here. Um, you know, I've seen your work. We we met before. You know, a couple of years back, and um, you're you're right on it. I mean, you're a cinematographer that can prove to everyone out there that. You, you can do amazing work still. You can do something different, and and you can run with it like you've done, and and build on it, and continue building on it, and coming up with different ideas like this Bodoa video, which I, I congratulate you for doing that. And and you're also showing us here today that it could be it could be uh, it could be something that you can live off of too. And you don't have to do both. You don't have to do the photo and video, you can just do the, the cinematography and the, the filmmaking and, and you'll be off it. You know, Jose just said to us that he loves to keep a balance um, at home too, you know, and he needs time off for his family as well. And that's why he takes on, um, you know, anywhere from 11 to 12 weddings a year and he's still doing well, you know. So there you go, guys. Um, there was, there's uh, Jose Ortiz, excellent uh, filmmaker, uh, born and raised in Puerto Rico, now living in Tampa, Florida. Is that correct, Tampa? Correct. Right. And um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the hockey team here in Tampa. Anyway, uh, yes, thank you so much. Um, I I hope to see you guys in in, in Arizona and and Phoenix. Uh, that's gonna be a great event. I can't wait to be there. I know I know there's gonna be a lot of familiar faces. We're gonna have a blast, and hopefully, you know, uh, people can see me on the workshop and also on the class. We're gonna be also doing, like I said, the workshop is gonna be about bubble wires, but we're gonna do in a class, bring in different things. For example, one thing that I've been doing that I did in WPPI, people loved it, is the way that I've been using to pre-select and look for the music on my videos. Because people ask me all the time, oh, the music, you always got like the right song, man. So what do you do, how you do it, what tools you use? Because I know people, the most, people who does videos, they know. One of the worst things is looking for the right music. So. We're gonna be talking about in the class about different things, how I I've been making extra money with my deliveries and stuff like that. So it's gonna be great, and I have to thank you, uh, uh, Triple Scoop. Uh, they, they they are pretty much helping me and making this possible, and also the Media Zilla people, um, the people that sponsor me, and I really support, and I even make money with the products. And we're gonna be talking about that too. Thank you so much, and. I'll see you in Phoenix in August. It's gonna be hot for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, man! Uh, super hot. It's hot here in Texas, and I'm sure. No, no, I can I can wait. <laughs> so, awesome guys. Well, there you go. The the man himself, Jose Ortiz, uh, filmmaker, internationally known. Uh, matter of fact, uh, a person that's a uh, he does very good work. Uh, Jose, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank everyone that was watching us here today. Interview Jose Ortiz and you know and your videos I, I i can't i can't say enough thank you so much guys i'll see you guys in arizona in august the end of august and i'm so happy to meet uh i'm excited and to meet everyone and, and especially uh our guest speaker here today Jose Ortiz. thank you again and have a thank wonderful you. thank day. you for for everybody who you know put their time to see me and and uh i always i always say i mean i cannot do what i do if i don't have the people who go to my workshops so uh thank you so much and i'll see you guys in august good thank you